Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our class guides for this beautiful game. We are having the Ranger as the class of choice for today and I'm going to condense all of the information for the class in a 10 minute no BS, no repetition, information packed video. As such the Ranger is a class that excels in many roles and as always I will be focusing on two builds but I want to honorably mention that all four builds of the Ranger are definitely serviceable and very very much playable. The reason why I say that is not all of the other classes have that luxury. The Ranger can be perceived by many as quote unquote the strongest class. I don't believe that there is such a thing as the strongest class but the Ranger definitely excels at dealing damage taking out and assassinating backline opponents, having just an incredible, uh, incredible amount of uh, utility and additional skills that they can use. And through their skill tree, it feels that they have ev always a sl um, ace up their sleeves and can deal with almost any situation. So the two builds that I want to focus on today is a beginner uh, build for the beginning of uh, the game, which uh, I would choose the Poisoner. I uh, very much think highly of it as a combination build, has a lot of utility function and you get a dagger quite early that can uh, work off of poison. And then the assassin build, which is the first uh, arena unlockable build, in my perspective, my personal favorite uh, build. A very much uh, honorable mention towards the Cutthroat, uh, which is kind of a cleanup build, very much similar to um, XCOM uh, Serial or Death from Above. And the Strategist build, which uh, harmonizes well in specifically teams that uh, rely on positioning, where moving enemies around and then triggering attacks of opportunity uh, could be a powerful strategy. So let's look into what uh, the two builds, Poisoner and Assassin, have uh, to go for them. Let's start with the Poisoner build. The Ranger itself as a DPS character is supposed to deal damage and can use Valor in order to do that. It's a Valor sinking build. I repeat the core mechanic again. Uh, in my perspective, Valor um, gaining builds uh, such as the tanks or the spearmen are tendentially trying to be um, positive in the Valor generation, i.e. generate more value than they take. And whilst the Ranger is net negative, they take the, uh, the Valor and will deal as much damage as possible with them. Um, in that regard, I personally go with Valorous Victory, which also gives you Valor every time you kill a unit. The Ranger typically, if you play your cards right, will be able to kill two to three units every single turn uh, in a repetitive uh, fashion. Um, specifically in the end game, uh, you, you will be able to pull that off. So you kind of break more or less even with it. Today we're going to look at the Poisoner. Poisoner is a build that allows light armor. If you look through all of the builds, not surprisingly, the Ranger is a light armor uh, class and that means they are incredibly fragile. The idea is go in, deal damage, go out, uh, which makes skills like sprint incredibly important, as you will see. The Ranger typically is a dual wielding class. You have a prime um, hand, a dagger, and an offhand. As an offhand in general, I would for the beginning uh, recommend going with a torch. You can use that really until the end game. There are plenty of offhand throw weapons that are also good, but the torch is an all around really good weapon. Poisoning as a skill applies four poison, aka 20% um, hit points per round damage in a relatively large area. Modest throw range of nine meters, which is around as much as you would get from uh, archers as an, um, as an example. And it is stackable, so the poison stacks really will, uh, will move up over time. Um, the poison also can combine very well with other um, uh, classes such as uh, the brood uh, that uh, that um, uh, works off of uh, them or uh, another uh, ranger uh, per se so you will see that poison in itself can be a strong mechanic however you shouldn't rely only on it it is a great option to bust tanks open uh, so if you can't go through the armor Poison is a valid strategy, but it only applies once per round. 
And then for level 5 I'm a big fan of instinctive throw, which means after every skill that you use uh, you are throwing a knife, uh, which just really adds up and you will see that the ranger has a lot of skills and you will want to get every single skill on the ranger that you can get from the free learning skills and all of it will always trigger instinctive throw. The alternative is deadly contract and um, I'm personally a big fan. The upgraded version applies fragility, so 30% free damage buff to the two nearest enemies. However, since sometimes you want to go for the backline, this can be a bit hit or miss. I like instinctive throw a lot. As for the poisoner build, explosive gas is the way to go. Doubles the poison stacks on all units in the area. Uh, that means if you are running multiple poisoners or have different ways of additionally poisoning, this will easily just uh, double a lot of stacks. It is not uncommon that you see 10-ish stacks, which in return means 50 Five zero percent of health damage uh, the next uh, uh, the next turn, and that means the average lifespan of enemies is just two rounds. So you could theoretically build a party around just uh, dealing a lot of poison damage, then trying to disengage as far as possible and let the enemies die via poison. It's not the most efficient way of playing it, but it is an option. As for level 10, I personally like Unstoppable over Anticipation. Unstoppable means you can move through the enemies and that will allow you to keep your sprint skill, uh, which you might use in order to get out. Anticipation will make you a little bit less hard to pin down, 50% chance of not getting engaged, but instead dealing an attack of opportunity in return. My um, mantra is to not even stand where you could be engaged in the first place. If you uh, are being engaged, you're potentially doing something wrong. You should be far behind your front line. As for the level 12 skills, uh, it is an interesting one because there are a couple of the, uh, ways of how you can build it. Um, if you have no one else that uses a bravery skill, decisive maneuver is a pretty damn good uh, mobility because it gives you a second full turn uh, set of actions, but it requires you to act first in the round, then do all of your shenanigans, then wait until the very last time and then take your second attack. Great on paper, in reality, eh, not so much specifically with uh, larger groups, um, it starts to lose its potency. I personally go for uh, class specialization and since I take instinctive throw here, I would then take deadly contract as uh, the second one, which is a relatively good uh, option or alternatively cold blooded uh, for extra damage from behind. Both are okay for the poisoner build um, as, as they will just increase the damage. The playstyle of the ranger is very much go in, kill a couple of light armor targets and go out and try to generate a bit of Vela, but other than that just sink your entire Vela bar into it. In terms of stats you want 15 willpower, you want 16 to 18, rather 18 movement, um, unless you're playing the assassin build uh, where you will see resets of uh, movement in between and that will make your life much, much easier. You can then get away with potentially 15 or 16 movement, but I personally would, uh, um, uh, for the flexibility, always go with a little bit more movement. The rest goes straight into critical hit. In the end game, um, my um, rangers have gotten all the way up to 80, 80% uh, critical hit, uh, which is massive uh, for damage dealing per se. Now, move on to the assassin build as the second one. The assassin build um, could have actually received a different name because cutthroat is really what uh, symbolizes assassin, but be it as it may, assassin is a spec that you gain off of the first arena and uh, it will build very similarly. You want to go into a Valorous victory in order to uh, gain Valor for kills. Right between the eye is a fantastic option, inflicts damage and applies bleeding. If target is already bleeding, damage is doubled. Hint, hint, you want to maybe use that together with a Harpenier Spearman or with a Brute Smasher uh, to just get bleeding onto the targets. Um, alternatively, any form of Archer uh, that applies bleeding with critical hits on their strikes is also fine. Uh, it is noticeable damage. Um, as bleeding itself will deal another 20% hit point loss and it also the upgraded version um, resets your movement if you don't kill the target which is fantastic you move in uh, throw it and essentially continue then 
It is only six meters uh, range, which is medium, but with aim you can make it even longer. It works with that as it is a ranged attack. Um, wonderful skill, in my perspective, my favorite way of playing the ranger. I will then combine it with instinctive throw for those extra attacks uh, to continue d dashing in and out. I will then go into cold blooded, uh, increased attacks from behind. Uh, typically good for engaged targets uh, that sort of offsets a little bit of uh, their guard and makes it easier for you to go through. We're then going into unstoppable and take the class specialization into deadly contract. So really uh, trying to uh, throw as many uh, daggers as possible. We want to deal as much damage as possible and we don't want to be hampered by terrain or enemies um, and the class specialization helps us with fragility right over there that in my perspective is the way to go with uh, the ranger and let's see some gameplay in action which brings us to the gameplay section of the ranger guide this time we're going with a poisoner as an example this is a e level 11 version of the poisoner i've crafted just a basic gear the acadian steel stiletto uh, which is the normal craftable dagger normal craftable light armor and we're going with the absolute basic torch uh, to uh, continue uh, creating more uh, AOE effects. Um, we're fighting against none other but level 14 enemies, the hardest enemies in the game, heavily out leveling us and with the basic gear they are a, a difficult um, task. So I just want to showcase the Ranger in all of its abilities. The Ranger really fits a good uh, slot on the battlefield. In this case we do have two fronts, uh, one over here which is almost uh, killed and uh, a solid uh, front over here, which needs to be set up for the next round. And one thing that the Ranger can excel at is really uh, working towards exactly that goal, can uh, achieve both at the same time. So we're having a Phalanx Soldier here uh, that is uh, still relatively healthy. Uh, and we do have a lot of enemies over here which theoretically can benefit uh, from being attacked. So let's uh, start by moving in uh, with uh, the Phalanx Soldier. A little trick if you step five feet away with a uh, torch, you don't engage with them immediately and you can instead just use uh, the continuous uh, uh, throws uh, of uh, your passive ability. By putting aim in, you get another throw. Um, if I was to heal someone uh, close, I would get another throw. And even run uh, will get me another throw. Now, in order to use that to its maximum potential, we're currently not engaged here. So we're engaging with a solid um, strike and following up with Wrath to actually kill him. This tr uh, triggers Fury, which in return will allow us to move through the enemies, thanks to uh, our ability to uh, not create pa uh, passing. You can also move right back through them. Um, we could uh, attack from here with our torch if we still had the strike. Just wanted to showcase uh, that. But really what we want to do is we want to set them up for a few uh, for the future um, and in order to do that uh, we're going to use the poison bomb over here that's first of all triggering poison then our dagger does have explosive oil every time a skill deals damage there is a solid percent chance to also deal health damage so since that was an AoE skill we dealt health damage to everyone and we're going to make it even worse. There is the extra poison with a poisonous clout. So these guys are having 10 stacks of poison. This also triggers our um, movement, um, which, um, which will completely reset. Uh, if we would have had Roby, uh, hit Roby, we could first aid him for some extra damage. And really, that is uh, how we're setting them up. Next round, you will see a substantial amount of damage. That is, fifty percent of their health is going to is going to go down just based on the poison. Matter of fact, 
we're going to have a round reset very soon and we're going to just uh, uh, let them implode by using our uh, explosive gas again um, stacking solid 20 stacks which will be 100 percent so from uh, 100 to zero they will die however at the end of their turn not at the beginning of their turn let's see how this poison is coming along we're uh, going to use yet another explosive gas as mentioned so all of these guys are down but then moving over here slight move to over here single poisoning him into a strike into a kill very good and now let's see how well the poison is ticking down these guys are heavily heavily poisoned so they're still engaging and they will still take their turn which means you need a good tank then voila you have uh, literally just killed them all of them are dead they just don't know it yet good time for some more ranger gameplay this time we are having the assassin right between the eyes and we're rocking the same off and torch just a different build uh, we do have a solid front line over here this would be perfect for a poison uh, bomb but as so often you're not always having the right skills available so what we're going to do instead is i would want to make sure that we can nicely finish uh, the uh, enemies we do have a technician over here what we're going to do is just trigger uh, the uh, passive ability to get him right below 50 percent of his health uh, trigger fury then move straight through the enemies uh, thankfully our torch hits all three of them and we are particularly interested in light armored targets so what we're going to do is we're going all the way to here we're hitting uh, the captain mind you uh, that is the named uh, boss of uh, this particular set of enemies and you can see we've already gotten him down uh, to a substantial uh, margin a single hit and another one gets him down a bit uh, more keeps him um, barely above 50 uh, percent had we not killed uh, this guy here i would have potentially sprinted and then used the wrath in order to finish the captain the way that it currently just unfolds we're going to stay in melee combat because archers are particularly bad in melee combat i stick with the engagement and we're not going to go away we are uh, fragile but we are less fragile if uh, we're fighting and at our uh, uh, rules and not at the rule set of the enemy we have enough movement with the ranger as you can see since it uh, resets to uh, still go back but the idea is since uh, the round very much ends soon the only one who is uh, left is the captain is we're going to act first in the next turn we will kill the captain and that'll happen in a second so let's shortly see how the melee combat would uh, would unfold it's nine points of damage and then unfortunately he was able to get off a an attack of opportunity even in melee combat but our ranger is still standing strong enough typically you wouldn't want to be in that position to begin with so reinforcements arrive perfect timing for our ranger uh, to boogie out and uh, no longer be there and in order to do that first of all we need to get rid of uh, the captain now we already know these guys are going to act uh, next and what we want to do is make sure that we'll deal as much damage as humanly possible triplet hit uh, here um, we might want to go for the uh, uh, tactician uh, uh, first 
because it's the lightest um, armored target. And we're down to 80 with another solid crit. We're definitely getting them down. Uh, using aim just to hit one more time. And I could theoretically uh, taunt into sprint and uh, continue with that. But the reality is I want to save our uh, Valor points. So we're go just going to take uh, some cover over here, which is far enough away from anyone uh, to not be hit. And it's going to be an interesting fight.